Okay, and we're counting down to the premiere of uh, Memento Mori, an exciting new production created by renowned Durban theatre maker Penelope Youngelson in collaboration with the DUT Drama and Production and Performing Technology students. This enchanting work tackles the delicate subject of mortality, weaving a, ma a magical tale of love, loss and the beauty of human connection. Joining us this morning is the creative force behind Memento Mori, Penelope Youngelson. Very good morning to you, Penny. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It's lovely to be here. It's an absolute pleasure having you join us this morning. And first of all, congratulations on a new production. What inspired you to create Memento Mori and how did the idea evolve from your children's book of the same name? Thank you. Um, so it actually started off with my own uh, father, unfortunately dying a couple of years ago, and noticing how my niece and nephew, who were very young at the time, were struggling to understand the idea of loss, the fact that he was not going to come back. It wasn't yeah. just a goodbye, it was, it was a lifelong thing. And so from there, I made a short story for them, and which evolved into a book, which then has now evolved into a, a theatre piece featuring the DUT students. Um, and they've handled it so sensitively and so well. I'm really, really proud of them. And your work, I understand, often explores complex themes in an accessible way. So how do you approach uh, tackling difficult subjects like mortality, especially for younger audiences? Yeah, that's a very big question. Um, I'm used to doing more political dramas and satire, so this yes. was a big leap for me personally as a theatre maker. Um, children's theatre or theatre for young audiences is a very challenging genre. I'm not sure I've handled it well, but I've tried my best. <laughs> I'm um, sure you have. <laughs> Thank you. I think the most important thing really is to find the human connection. So yeah. even in political stories, about the minutia of everyday life and about how how uh, private citizens deal with their own politics. And so I've tried to apply that theory to this uh, story as well, where I've really tried to be aware of how it affects individuals rather than just um, my idea of what death may or may not be. Yeah, sure. And the set design and costumes are described as absolutely magical and sensory feast. <laughs> Uh, can you walk us through your vision for the production's aesthetics and how you achieved it? Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm, I am a theatre maker, which means I design, write, produce and direct myself. So the way that I make work is I picture it first. So it's a picture in my head and then I mm. retrofit it back from there. So the idea of the play has been very much visual from the beginning. I have an absolutely stellar team behind me. I'm Nell van Amadva on set construction, Anne Youngelson on costume fabrication, Claire Craighead on technical rigging and, and lights. So it's a real powerhouse of women who are leading this team um, and they're doing a fantastic job. I'm very proud to say that 81% of our design, set prop, props, costume, all of it uh, is recycled, upcycled or thrifted. So we're trying to keep a very mindful also of the life cycle of objects and how we maintain, <clears throat> excuse me, a really thoughtful and um, and a mindful way of making work. So the design is very much inspired by children's drawings. It has a quite a naive quality to it. Um, and I really want people to feel that they were immersed into a book, that they were yes. sitting inside a children's book while they were watching it. So the style of it is quite whimsical, is quite um, sort of, uh, I almost want to say sketched in a way that yeah. you can almost picture it as being a drawing um, and that you've landed inside the, the, the world of the story. Mm -hmm. And I just say that, uh, you know, the style is, uh, well, quite whimsical and uh, it features an mm. array of whimsical characters. Which one resonates with you the most and why? That's like asking who your favourite child is. You're not allowed to ask this. <laughs> I know it's an unfair but question. Will... It is, it is. Especially because my students are watching. So they right. can get me after that. But um, I, I will probably say, and they're all going to be upset, but I will probably say the mushrooms. There are some talking mushrooms in the play. Okay. Um, because the, the mushrooms have a sweet little scene where they talk about being connected through the mycelium of storytelling. Mm. So how we're all connected to each other and how these little mushroom stories pop up as we um, experience life together. And of course, mushrooms, as we know, grow in the darkest, most inhospitable um, circumstances. So um, I like to think that even in a, a dark and, and, and scary time, like when someone is passing, even beautiful things can grow. Now, Penny, how did you, or rather, how did your collaboration with the DOT students influence the final product? And what did you learn from that experience? Gosh, so much. Um, I'm very, very lucky to work at DUT and to work with my students. I have um, 14 backstage high certificate students who are absolutely fantastic and have worked so hard in this production. And I have 53 acting students who are the cast of the show. And 
both sets of students have just been absolutely wonderful, so curious, so generous with their time, so interested in learning, um, so open to, to exploring themes that perhaps at first glance aren't so inviting or aren't so easy to deal with. Um, it's been a long process. We've been working since the 22nd of July, um, which is very long for theatre. We normally don't have budgets to work that long, so um, I suppose we can thank free labour at universities mm, <laughs> for that process. Right. But um, yeah, just to just to see them really choose to to excavate themselves, to be willing to be open, to just throw themselves open and say, let's let's deal with this, let's deal with the story and see where it goes, has been really really warm and kind and caring as a process. And I think that the audiences will and enjoy the benefits of that when they watch that it's not just my story it really isn't it really is the cast story as well yeah and speaking of the cast i mean i see there's tempus fugit and advita brevis uh, being at the heart of the story That's can right. you tell us more about their relationship and the symbolism behind their names Absolutely. So um, it comes from Latin. The title of the play is actually Latin as well. Memento mori means remember that you must die. Um, it is a, a saying that comes from ancient Rome that when a conquering emperor came back to celebrate a victory, there would always be someone at their left ear saying, remember you are mortal, just to keep them humble, you know. Yes. Um, and I think the... Um, the, the resonance of that in a world which felt, especially post lockdown, felt so disconnected and felt so isolated. We were very much in silos, but so aware of death at the same time. And I wanted to try and bring that back that sense of community and ritual that um, death doesn't need to be final, that, that people stay alive in our memories, that it isn't the last word. So Tempus Fugit means time flies in Latin and Evita Brevis means life is short. And in the play, they are best friends. Um, they've, they, they are from before time. They actually live in time itself. I know that might sound strange, but just stick with it for now. Um, they live in time. And so we watch their journey uh, as as beings who, who, are, who, who are endless in a way. Their friendship is endless. But when one of them goes, what happens? What happens when, when someone is beyond your knowledge of how things are? Yes, yes. Um, and so I, I tried to incorporate a sense of you know the the strata of history and how we deal with rich how we deal with death is often through ritual um, in many cultures we have different ways of dealing with death um in my culture for instance there is a year of mourning and then we shave our hair and then we start anew it's a sense of renewal once we've mourned someone properly and so mm. I try to incorporate different South African rituals into the play as well of how we deal with it and I love to think about that as our grandparents grandparents talking to us through time saying yes someone has gone but they never die as long as we remember them and so these rituals and these processes help us to to keep our families and our identity alive and so tempest fugit and Evita brevis go through this journey together and we see hopefully by the end of the play that there is a really beautiful cycle of of a person being with us in our hearts as we continue with our journey and then when that journey comes to an end the next generation will then in turn remember us and perform their own rituals and so hopefully um, we have a sense of yeah, of the bedrock of our of our community being built layer by layer yeah. through this uh, choice to remember. All right, Penny. And I quite like what you said, that death does not need to be final. Thank you so much for joining us, Penny. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed my time with you. It, it's an absolute pleasure. We do thanks. appreciate your time. All right. So many thanks to Penny Youngelson for sharing the inspiration and creative process behind Memento Mori. Now, this captivating uh, production, of course, promises to be an unforgettable experience for all audiences of all ages. And do not miss Memento Mori at the Courtyard Theatre at DUT from the 17th of October to the 19th of October. So make sure that you get your tickets now and be part of this exciting journey.